There is an old saying that is actually quite stupid, and when you apply it to diabetes, it is responsible for all kinds of misery and terrible complications. Here's someone who says, I've been watching your videos since the beginning of 2021. My A1C was 10.9, which is terrible. Now it's down in the low fives, which is wonderful. So from terrible to wonderful. Now he says, or she says, if I still eat half of a potato, which I know I should not have, my feet will still yell at me. The tingling will start. I don't even have to go to Mike the Meter to tell me to back away from potatoes. This is truly a lifestyle you're talking about here. Well, you're right. It is a lifestyle. I, I will say I haven't heard a lot of people. I don't recall many at all that have said something like this person said, which is if I just eat a high carb food, my feet, my toes or my fingers start to tingle. Uh, for most of the time and for most of us, it's when our glucose goes low that we really feel it. And I have had that uh, happen many times in those early days when I was trying to get a handle on what was going on with my body. And my glucose would soar and I normally wouldn't feel much, might even feel good. <laughs> but when it dropped, which it sometimes could, uh, I would. you better believe I would feel it and I would be feeling like I'm about to pass out. I do remember a couple of particular times uh, where I did feel a glucose surge. One was when I had a bowl of, um, I think it was, uh, well, it was uh, Kix. I think it was Kix cereal, K-I-X. And I don't know if they even still make it, but back in probably around 2001, 2002, uh, they did. And uh, I had a bowl of Kix cereal and I could feel my glucose rising almost immediately after that. I don't know why that particular time or that particular food, but I could then. And then one other time, I had a large sweet apple. Now, a lot of people would say, well, an apple is fine. It's natural. A natural or not, it has a lot of sugar. And this one was big, problem number one. And it was very sweet, problem number two. Some apples are not as sweet as others. And if you have to eat an apple, eat one that's not so sweet and then cut it in half even better or just do away with it altogether even better still. Anyway, I had a large sweet apple and almost immediately I could feel the surge. And if I remember right, I tested my glucose shortly after that. It was like 200 or so. So, yeah, I was bouncing all over the place in those days. But normally, uh, I, I didn't feel the surges nearly as much as I felt the dropping. But if you, uh, some of you may have uh, experienced what this guy did. So, uh, I'd be curious to know. Anyway, here's another person who writes, I am 86 years old. Well, good for you. Uh, you're doing, if you're 86 and you're still relatively healthy, you're doing pretty well. However, they say, I've had diabetes for 41 years. Wow, that's a long time to have diabetes. I was on insulin for 15 years. I stopped eating carbs for about the la a year and a half. And my doctors have taken me off all diabetic meds. So been on insulin for 15 years and now no longer on insulin, no longer on any diabetic meds at all age 86. Well, this person missed the memo. What's the memo, you ask? It's the memo that says diabetes must always and inevitably will get worse the older you get. So if you first get diabetes in your 50s, time you're in your 60s, it'll be worse. 70s, worse still. 80s, worse still, if you even live that long. And so that is the theory. That is the idea. That's what everybody will tell you. And everybody is wrong. Sort of. Now, I will admit that if you don't do anything about your diet and your lifestyle and you just go right on the same way you've been doing, then, yeah, it will get worse. Absolutely. And that's why people say that, because for most people, they don't do anything. They don't make changes. They don't do a lifestyle intervention. And so, yeah, it's worse in the 60s, in their 60s than it was in their 50s. It's worse in their 70s than it was in their 60s and so forth and so on. However, this person decided to make some changes. And lo and behold, it's now better for them. They're not taking insulin. They were taking it 15 years. And there's another idea that once you start taking insulin, you can never back off. Once you get into that 
on that slippery slope and dive down into the world of taking insulin. You can never retreat. And this person is proving that to be not true. Now, if you're type 1, of course, you'll need insulin. But for a type 2 diabetic, uh, often if you've been eating the standard diet, the same old junk, the same old high-carb diet, and suddenly you change, there's a good chance, <laughs> in fact, I'd say a likelihood, not just a chance, a likelihood you will be better with better glucose control, better numbers, better A1C, better fasting glucose in your 70s or 80s than you were in your 50s or 60s because of the changes you've made. And it's certainly true for this individual. It's true for me. I've got better glucose control now than I had 30 years ago or 20 years ago, I, I guess I should say. Better glucose control, better numbers, uh, healthier, don't have the problems I had 20 years ago. I guess I missed the memo as well. The memo that says you've just got to get worse. Everything's going to get worse. <laughs> well, some things will get worse for you as you age. Some things you can't do much about. But praise God, diabetes is something you can do something about. And if you've been on that standard diet, you have no idea how much better things can be for you. If you ever get off that standard diet, you know, the diet with, with donuts and all kinds of white bread products and pastries and uh, sweet desserts and Coca-Colas and Pepsi-Colas and all kinds of uh, fruit juices and so forth. You have no idea how much better things can be for you if you will just lay off that junk and start eating healthy and cut those carbs way down and throw in some time-restricted eating as well, maybe even a little all-day fasting here and there, if the doctor says you can. So you don't have to get worse, my friend. And you may right now, some of you I know listening to me, we have enough listeners that I can confidently predict there are some of you you, you just got a diagnosis of diabetes and you are scared to death. And you've heard it's a progressive disease. It's just going to get worse. We can maybe slow it down if we try to lose a little weight. That's about the best we can hope for. My friend, you can hope for a lot better than that. In fact, uh, blue skies, uh, as the song says, are coming at you if you will make the necessary intervention of low-carb eating and time-restricted eating and throw in some exercise as well. Okay, well, how about one of the stupidest sayings that has ever been declared? Uh, it's not what this person said, but it's what uh, applies to what this person said. This, this man says, a year ago, my A1C was 10.3, and I was having a big toe amputated. Now, I've had three months of no medication and my A1C is, are you ready for this? A year ago, 10.3, having an amputation of the large toe. Now, a year later, my A1C, and no medication anymore, A1C is 4.9. He says, thanks to low-carb living. 10.3 to 4.9, how in the world do you do that? Well, you do away with the thing that is offending you. The Bible says if your hand offends you, cut it off. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. Well, it's not talking literally, of course, but it's saying if you're in doing something that is hurting you, stop doing it by all means. And so this person was doing something that is hurting them, and that was eating the standard way that Americans eat and Australians eat and the British eat and, sadly, even uh, many countries that didn't used to eat our way, such as the Africans and the Asians. They're all starting to eat all the junk now, and they're coming down with record rates of diabetes. But when you stop and you put on the brakes and you hear that screeching brake sound and you start eating healthy and you cut those carbs— uh, things get better. Now, what's the saying that is the stupidest saying that uh, one of the more stupidest, stupid sayings that has ever been said? The saying is this, what you don't know won't hurt you. Wrong, 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 wrong. And when it comes to diabetes, it is so wrong. There are millions of people in our country that are pre-diabetic or barely diabetic, and they don't even have a clue they are. Some do even know, but they don't know what it's doing to their body. Most of them uh, that I'm referring to don't even know they have diabetes. They don't know their diet is poisoning them with a, with a poison that's going to destroy their life, destroy their health, and produce all kinds of negative complications. And they don't know it. They are, as the saying goes, blissfully ignorant. Just going about their life, enjoying their life, 
and uh, eating the way they enjoy eating, and they're destroying themselves, and they don't know it. My friend, what you don't know can not just hurt you, it can kill you. It can rob you of your legs, your feet, your toes, your eyes, your kidneys. What you don't know can hurt you. That's really true at almost every level, but it's especially true with diabetes. So get wise. You know, many of you watch a lot of my videos. You watch some others that are excellent that talk about low-carb eating and, and uh, being careful with uh, not uh, – taxing your metabolic system with a lot of high carbs, a lot of junk carbs, a lot of white flour, a lot of sugar. Uh, you watch enough videos. This is not new to you. You understand it fully. But do you realize most Americans don't watch these kind of videos? Most Americans have no clue who Dr. Jason Fung is or who Richard Bernstein is or who I am. Most Americans, most British, most Australians, most Africans, they don't know any of this stuff. They're totally ignorant. And what they don't know is destroying their health, their bodies, their lives. So the clue is to get the message out. And that's, of course, what I'm trying to do and lots of others are trying to do. But sadly, for many people, they won't even inquire. They won't even think about these things until their doctor looks at them and says, sir or ma'am, you have severe diabetes. And then they may get desperate enough to do some research and figure some things out which is better than not ever figuring it out, but how much better would it be to figure it out early on before they ever cross that line of diabetes, when they're still in the pre-diabetes stage or even before that, and they start cooling it with eating all the carbs and all the junk and all the white flour and all the sugar, and uh, they get things under control well before uh, they, they ever become diabetic. Those kind of people may be able to have an occasional potato, an occasional rice with their dinner and so forth, and still it won't affect them much if you can catch it really early. But for some of us who cross the line late, like in your 50s, uh, it's almost too late to really indulge in any starches uh, at all, or at least very few. So anyway, um, you, 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 what you don't know can hurt you. All right. This person says, it's a man, he says, your videos saved my life. I'm 57 years old. I had no symptoms, which is kind of amazing. I found out through chance I was a full-blown diabetic with an a A1C of 9.0, fasting glucose of 245. To me, that's amazing that you could have that high of blood sugar and you have no symptoms at all. Uh, but that's, was, this was his case. He said, but he was educated from my videos he said, my wife and I uh, went on a healthy, low-carb, high-fat uh, eating uh, diet and mild exercise. In three months, we dropped, and I don't know if he means himself or both he and his wife together or combined, whatever. They dropped weight, 25 pounds, he says, and an A1C now of 5.3. He says, I went from utter shock, depression, blaming myself for this to handling this disease head-on with your channel. Wow. Went from shock and depression which is kind of normal and natural, can't blame you. It is a depressing thing to find out you're not only diabetic, you're not just a little ways past the line, you're way into the land of diabetes. Uh, you've gone deep into diabetes. When your A1C is 9.0 and your fasting glucose is 245 milligrams per deciliter, uh, you are deep into the diabetic territory. But he says, I went from shock and depression and misery to saying I'm going to tackle this head on by watching some of my videos and probably some others. He says, my dad was diagnosed at 57. He died a horrible death. Uh, just before the pandemic, my numbers were still okay, but that pandemic hit. He said, I didn't go to the doctor for two years. And by the time I did get back, I had full-blown diabetes. Doctor rushed me to check my eyes and feet, basically told me to eat 300 to 400 carbs a day, grams of carbs. Wow. Uh, he says, I shocked my doctor. Uh, by uh, dropping my blood pressure from 165 over 118, which is quite high, to 135 over 85. And now he says, I've stabilized even lower at 118 over 74 for the last four weeks. Thank you and your wife for helping myself and my wife get a hold of this terrible disease. It's crazy how many diabetes were living amongst my motorcycle club. He's in a motorcycle club out in California, and apparently a bunch of them are diabetic. He says, we now help support each other. It is everywhere. You want to talk about a pandemic, a diabetes, prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, the whole thing uh, is a pandemic, is an epidemic, is a, 
uh, all over America, all over India, all over much of Asia, all over Africa. It's everywhere. We do medical clinics and diabetes is all over the place. Uh, so it is an epidemic, a pandemic, call it whatever you like. There's a lot of it, folks. There is a whole lot of it. And uh, we've got to we got to make some changes. It is our food culture that is causing the diabetes, the metabolic syndrome, and so forth. So we've got uh, an epidemic of diabetes all throughout the world, and we are eating ourselves into diabetes. The good news is you can repent. <laughs> you can repent and turn around and go the other direction. And in most cases, you can reverse the, the complications. You can definitely reverse your numbers. Whether you want to argue about, am I still a diabetic or not? That's your business. But boy, when those numbers come down, when the complications go away, when you're feeling so much better, your blood pressure is down, your A1C is down, your triglycerides are down, your, your, your energy is through the roof. I'd say something has been reversed, wouldn't you? Okay, well, that's it for now. God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't so that you can be notified when we post new videos. I appreciate you. God bless you. See you again soon. Probably most of you know my wife, Benedicta, but few of you know the amazing paths God has led her to bring her to where she is today. Benedicta was orphaned at an early age and lived with an elderly stepmother growing to adolescence. They were so poor, Benedicta had to drop out of school and sell food door to door for them to survive. As a teen, Benedicta got a job as a housemaid, which developed into a nightmare. She was required to cook, clean, wash, take care of the children, and she had to get up at 4 a.m. every day just to get her work started. Worse than that, she was frequently beaten. At around 20, she moved to the huge city of Lagos where she started her own little business. Sometimes she prospered, but at other times she nearly starved and went days at a time without eating. At one point, she became so sick she passed out in her room and nearly died. She found herself outside of her body and she was able to see the splendors of heaven until she was sent back with a command to share her story. One day, however, her life changed when an American evangelist came to her community to preach. And of course, that was me. The rest, as they say, is history. Benedicta has shared her life story in a recently published autobiography, and you can get it on Amazon as either an ebook or a paperback. A link to this book on Amazon is in the description.